Next question is from Tanner Sorrells. What was each of your biggest client pet peeves when you all were trained? Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. picked well, you know, I, I got one off the top of my head. Uh, I, used to, I used to hate having to um, explain or, or debate fads, fitness and health fads constantly. So, <laughs> oh, like, Lord. I'd be training a client for a year, two years, three years. You know, they've learned a lot. We've gotten real far. They've gotten great progress. Yeah. And then they'd come in and be like, hey, my friend lost just lost thirty pounds. She did this uh, HCG diet. Yeah, have you heard of it? And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Let me look it up. And I look it up. I'm like, all right, here's why it's not good. But uh, but she looks really good. How did she lose that weight? I'm like, well, it's you know four hundred calories a day. It's not has nothing to do with this HCG that they're injecting. And I'd have to have these discussions and debates. And I would get annoyed because I'd almost it's almost like you're you want to tell your client like you should know better. Yeah, you know, I've mean, been talking to you about this for three years. Now you're coming to bring me, but that was one of my pet peeves. But I always, I always tried to stay patient and calm because there's so much bad information out there that you know, a big part of your job as a trainer is just helping them sift through the crap and find the good stuff. You know? Lying to me, that was like my number one pet peeve. You know I mean, Cleon clients lie. They told you you're a good trainer. <laughs> yeah, you liar. That was, that, was a big, that was the biggest lie for sure. <laughs> you lie. No, I mean they do. Uh, when they track their food and stuff. Yeah, oh, food tracking or telling you that like, if I like you know uh, or you know ones where I try to get somebody to stop doing cardio and you know I'd they'd sneak around your. Back. Oh yeah, they would. I mm -hmm. I'd catch them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I catch them doing things. I'd be like, what did I tell you? You know, and th and then we wonder why things aren't going to according to plan. The other pet peeve of mine too, I and this is my own shit that I struggle with, is because unfortunately I I just don't have this thing. This is one of the one of the uh, attributes that Sal has that I wish I had is that large penis. Oh my god, you just <laughs> hit him, him out the park today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. We we would notice because uh, you were in shorts. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. No pants today. Yeah. Uh, no, I I don't have a I don't have a photographic memory and I am the worst like I I will read a study two or three times and it will take me at least four or five times trying to explain it before I think I can explain it really well um, and so when I would get you know challenged in something that I know I know I'm right like I know that I have the right information but then I couldn't articulate it really well. Mm -hmm. And I know that you, Sal can't relate to this because he doesn't. He is the opposite, mm -hmm. right? He's really good at this. Probably what made him really good as a trainer is that you could probably someone could question him on what he's doing and then he could break down the study to support it. I, on their hand, read the same studies but couldn't regurgitate yeah. it. <laughs> so it was more like, just trust me, God I knew damn it, I didn't apply it. <laughs> yeah. So that was a pet peeve. It, it, it would frustrate me when you would, you would hire me as a professional and, and then I lacked the ability to... Uh, again, again, I know it's my own shit, right? It's not like I, it's a mad at the, the, the client, but it was a, a frustration, right? Or a pet peeve of mine mm -hmm. of like having to like prove that I knew that I was talking about. It's like, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, if I, if I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, so that drove me crazy spending yeah, a lot of time doing that. One of my biggest pet peeves was when I would take all of the time in the world to explain like exactly why I was programming the way I was programming and going through all these steps and, uh, you know, trust the process and all that stuff. And I find out later, like they signed up for all these extra classes that yep. they were doing uh, uh, besides our, our sessions. And it was just like, it was always never enough, uh, which is a, a battle that I was constantly having with, with clients. And then, uh, you know, inevitably we get to a point where they, they realize they're just spinning their wheels and because I would have other people listen that would get gain progress, and then we'd have that conversation again and come up. But yeah, they used to just be so frustrating to me because it's, I mean, it just feel like it, it feels like doing more is always going to push you forward. But yeah, like it's always better. It's just always better. And that's, that's a hard argument to, to uh, unravel, you know, and, and show somebody that they're wrong. Yeah, so. here's, here's another one. Um, when I would go out to eat with a client, which wasn't super common, I did maintain a, a, a you know, professional line, but, uh, you know, after you train people five, six, seven years, you know, they'd ask you to you know, go to lunch or come over, meet my family. And you do it and you would see them change their, their like eating behaviors, but just because you're there, you know, like, oh, I'll make sure we go somewhere healthy. And I'm like, man, I'm just a regular person like you are. Yeah. And I train you. I've been training you for years. Like, it's not a big deal. You eat milkshakes? Yeah, you can have, a, you can have a, glass, a glass of wine and we can have pizza. Not Or you ever run into a client at the grocery store 
It's happened. It's happened to me a couple of times where I see a client with their with their cart, and then they see they see me, don't know that I saw that they saw me, and then they turn around real quick, <laughs> leave, leave the, the cart, leave yeah. the cart, yeah, because <laughs> it's all like frozen it's food. So embarrassed, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like it's I don't like, know whose this was. Oh. Yeah, it's so weird. Jumped, Thought it was mine. It, just it was jumped totally in here mine. off the yeah. racks. But I mean, you know, you, I'm, I mean, trainers are regular people too, and it, you're more effective when you the person is honest with you, and then you can work together. And I think sometimes. As a trainer, I might have made people feel like they couldn't be totally honest. So that was that's on me. It's like I'm, you know, following along your your lines, Adam. That was <laughs> yeah. on me. Pretty much. I mean, I think I think that's important to to note, right? With any pet peeves, frustrations, uh, we're sharing them and having fun with them. But mm-hmm. I, I, I'm also a, a person who uh, totally believes that it's a mirror of ourselves, right? So yeah. if I'm frustrated with anybody, and I stand by that. If I'm mad at another person or frustrated, and if, if I'm emotionally charged or irritated about anything that really isn't about the other person. It's really a reflection of myself. Um, so, right. yeah, we're having fun with these pet peeves yeah. and all. But oh, yeah. I, like, I could have communicated way better and would have absolved all of that. Right. So. Yeah. 